Okay, so with your drawing comes the requirement of having to create a logo. And using Word, uh, Microsoft Word, as a way to create a logo is a, kind of a fast and easy way of doing it. Lots of options, tons of options actually. But uh, let me go through uh, some of the basics here and show you how to do this. An alternative to this too is actually create your logo in SolidWorks. And I have a video on that, how you can create um, text, stylish text, and functional text, text that you can incorporate into your SolidWorks designs in order to emboss or deboss that as an extruded or an extruded uh, cut uh, feature. But here, let's go and use Word. So I'm using Word 2010, which I think is you know, might be kind of current, but there are other versions of Word that have uh, come out uh, since then. I believe have these very same capabilities, including their cloud-based uh, platform. But uh, the way you might uh, approach this is uh, to create something like this, is to go ahead and go to the Insert tab up here. And what you're looking for is Word Art. So you might have to do a search uh, for that. But when you get to Word Art, what it does, uh, just to get it started, not a whole lot of options here, uh, just go ahead and pick something that you think might be relatively close to the Word as part of the, as a portion of your logo and how you want that to look. So let's say you're looking for like maybe green with a white border, perhaps something like that would work. And then it's going to go ahead and plop that into place. So with our Word document over here, we have just you know the text that's sitting in the background. And these are elements that are going to be putting in front of that text, kind of like an image, kind of like an image in a way or a picture. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our text uh, cursor over here and kind of move that down a little bit. And we're going to take our elements up here and move those up. So you can actually see how some of these look. So they're just uh, text blocks, and they can be moved around. Some can be put in front of the others. Some be, uh, can be put into the background. But eventually, you're going to get something after some modifications in here that looks uh, kind of like that. So this text is going to be here. And whenever you insert something, it's always going to be here where the cursor is going to be. So we're going to go ahead and move that down a little bit so we can continue working down the page. So here's our text, and when you click on that text, what happens is it opens up or gives you the opportunity up here to open up your drawing tools. And drawing tools is uh, you know gives you a lot of different options in regard to how it looks, its shape, its uh, size, you know the color combinations and everything else. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and add some stuff. So I think the best way of approaching this is maybe start from the left and work our way over to the right. Okay, so over here on the left-hand side, we have shapes. We can go ahead and uh, scroll down through that or scroll up as you desire. Or, what might be a little bit easier is to uh, open it up, and we can look at a whole bunch more. So now they're uh, put into categories. Uh, for instance, like equation and shapes, it's got all the uh, arithmetic, uh, you know, uh, shapes in there in regard to the, the symbols that they use, including plus, minus, times, divided, equal, not equals to, and stuff like that. Flowchart, uh, there's some uh, items in here too that uh, kind of resemble what an Excel spreadsheet might look like in a graphical form like this. And other shapes too, like a barrel, um, here's uh, something that looks like a, like a text balloon perhaps, stars and banners, call outs, and other things. So, and then you, you know, what you do is you just pop these into, into place. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, select one here just to demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and select a banner. Uh, it's called Down Ribbon over here. And what you do is you get a cursor over here in your uh, modeling area and you know, on your Word uh, document. And you just stretch that out. It's kind of like an image. So you can make it uh, narrow, you can make it wide, uh, whatever you like, and you drop that into place. Once you drop it into place, it usually starts you with a two tone blue. You can go up here and actually change that. So over here in this section over here, we're just into uh, in the insert shape section over here. We can go to shape styles. We can open up that a little bit, and uh, we can see some options in here too. So if we want to change the color combination, we could do that until we get something that we like. Once we do that, we can right click on that and maybe add text. So this would be a place where you would add text, like where your company name would be, um, uh, the address, city, state, zip, and stuff like that. And when you do that, you can just click inside of that and add text. Uh, you can change the style of that text if you want to do that. If you want to make it black on white, white on black, uh, that'll work. Of course, these items over here are just for uh, the shape itself. But you can go over here to text fill and actually uh, change that a little bit. So uh, we can go back to automatic or make it black. And if you want to take that text and make it a little bit more condensed, you can do that too. So the way you would do that is you go back to home. You're going to toggle back and forth between home when it comes to text and drawing tools. And what you want to do is go up here to uh, lines and uh, paragraph spacing. 
go down here to line spacing options. We're going to make that a little bit more condensed like we did up, uh, up on top. So this is what you want to do. You want to make the spacing afterwards equal to zero points. And now you're going to define exactly what that's going to be. So we're up here looking at Calibri uh, number 11, which is just kind of basic text up here. We're going to make it exactly, and we can make it 11 or 12. We make it less than 11. It's going to start truncating the letters. So maybe 12 would be a good choice. If you go to OK, now that makes it a lot more condensed. And we can take that up here too. We can take that text color up here and actually change that. If we go over here to text color, we can go ahead and make that uh, black too. So now that we have that in place, we're going to line out a little bit. Maybe move that down. And uh, now we have the capacity to actually do something additional with that. So we can stretch this a little bit too. If we want to have a little bit more room on top to actually put another logo in there, we could do that. Uh, what would be appropriate on top of this would be like maybe the name of your company. So we can take that text and move that down. Again, lots of variations. We can go back in here and actually do more options with regard to the shape. So I think that's probably what we're going to do next. We're going to look at some options with shapes, and then we'll come back to the text here just to finish this up. Okay, so let's look at some shape options up here. One thing you'll notice that uh, while we're in this right now, right in the middle of Word, we don't see that, uh, that drawing tools that you used to have up here. And the way you get back into that is you actually click on one of these shapes or the text that you created within WordArt, and now you get that tab in the background. So if you click on that tab, now you have these options. So we could edit shape. We can go up here and change the shape, or we can edit the points of that shape if you want to do that. If we want to change the shape, we can just go ahead and pick something else. Edit points, because this is the capacity. It adds some of these points. So you notice that uh, we have uh, two different kinds of points in here. If we were to take this point and move that out a little bit, that actually defines the shape of the outline. And we can move that around, and this actually takes a shape, or moves the shape of the, of the background over here, too, the shaded portion of that. So we can do that and move that around and kind of changes uh, the way that looks. And if we go back to the shape uh, toolbar, the drawing tools, and go back up here, we can draw a text box in here. What that uh, is going to do is give us the capacity to actually create a square where text goes inside of that. And then over here is a bunch of different shape options. We can change uh, the style of our shape if we want to do that. Maybe something that's a little bit lighter would work. And then we over here, we have uh, some items for shape fill. So now we can actually specify some of the items may, we might want to have inside of that fill. So we can do different colors if you want to do that instead of the style that it uh, provided for us. Now we can do the decide on what color we want to make the inside if we want to do that. And then uh, the line, uh, shape of the outline. We can make that black if we want to do that. And then shape effects in here. We can do all sorts of stuff, 3D rotation, maybe something that's just a little bit off to the side. That works out too. And back here to shape fill, let's go and uh, look at some, some more options that we have in here. We can uh, click on more fill colors, which kind of gives us a kaleidoscope of colors that we can choose from. Another option over here is uh, go to a picture. If you want to go to a you know, stock picture and put that in there, you can do that too. Uh, you can put that in the background. Uh, we're going to do Control Z on that, but uh, that is an option in there too. You'll notice that it actually put it inside of that shaded area. But we could also go into Gradient too and actually do a gradient. So now it's going to be darker in our center instead of on the outside. And let's go back and actually see some of the other gradient options too. So now we can make it so it's light in the center and maybe dark in the outside or maybe light on, on one side and dark in the bottom. Uh, those are options there too. But one more option, which is kind of fun, is we could actually apply a texture to it. So maybe a fish fossil or maybe some crumpled brown paper. We could do that too and put that in the background. Kind of makes the address a little bit hard to see. And you'll notice that when we want to go back in there and edit some of the text, that it actually comes square to the screen. When we're done making those edits in there, click off to the side, then it assumes it's a normal 3D shape. So we can actually go inside of this thing and actually change uh, some of the colors in here too, if we want to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that here in just a moment. Okay, even more options. Remember how we clicked in this last time? We got to the drawing tools or draw tools up here. But now because we put a picture in the background, we have picture tools too. So we can go up here to picture tools. And some of this is grayed out, which means we can't really use it. But there are other items up here too that we can actually uh, you know, make some uh, modifications to. 
So we could add artistic effects, we could change the color. Maybe we don't want to have a brown paper bag, maybe we want to have something that's a little bit different. Maybe we want to have it pixelated, uh, maybe we want to have it a little bit lighter. Uh, perhaps uh, something that will show the foreground a little bit better. And that gives us that correction, or it gives us that, uh, you know, that option. And the corrections over here too actually uh, will make it lighter for us or darker for us if we want to do that for brightness and control, sharpness and softness if we want to do that all sorts of different options in here. So now that we have something that we like, let's go ahead and take that address and move that down a little bit. Let's actually do something a little, that's a little bit more stylish in regard to the words we want to put in here. So let's go ahead and add uh, some more elements in here. What I like to do is add some uh, text in here that might uh, define our company name. It would have uh, some style to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember how we enter that? We go ahead and uh, click on some of the art we've already created in here. Uh, that gives us that uh, Drawing Tools tab that we can click on. And what we want to do is go back up here to these options up here, very similar to what we had before. Let's go, in a, uh, go ahead and insert some text. So I'm going to go ahead and choose something different, like maybe this uh, A over here. And what it does is it's going to uh, provide just a teeny weeny little box down here that we can continue to add uh, additional information to. So I'm going to call this ABC and then uh, return. I'm going to call that designs. So ABC designs. And it's a little bit small, so we're going to have to make that a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select that text. We're going to go over here to home, to the home tab. Instead of Calibri body number 11, we're going to keep the, that text in here because the word art is going to change uh, some of the style there. But uh, you could choose a different font too. It might have uh, make minor modifications to how it's going to look. But let's go back up to uh, 36. And remember we have to go over here to our uh, uh, line spacing options. If you go ahead and raise your cursor over that, it tells you what that is, but this is where you want to go. You want to go to line and paragraph spacing. Open that up, go to line spacing options, and still set to zero, and at 12. But now we're at 36, so let's go ahead and uh, type in 36 here and go to OK. And now we have that in shape. So let's go ahead and uh, to go to the front of those headers, return out so we can bring that up to the top a little bit. And then we're going to make that centered to kind of get back that, uh, get that back into the center. We're going to adjust some of this other text in here too. And now we have that in place. And when we click off to the side, now you see that 3D effect. Let's go back up to that text here and uh, make some more modifications to it. Let's go to the Drawing Tools tab. Uh, we have a couple of different options up here just to the right of the, the word styles that we uh, chose. We could do text fill. Right now it's selected uh, as that light blue color, but we can make it whatever color we like. Maybe uh, some sort of green, maybe a dark green. And uh, if you want to do that, probably should select all that text in there. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and select all of it. So again, it's going to straighten out when we do that, when we make those selections. Click off to the side and then it does the 3D effect. So let's select all those others we want to make an impact on. We could do text outline in here, maybe dark red. Uh, we could do text effects here too. So we already have that 3D rotation in our shape. And we can emulate that too. I don't think it's going to make much of a change, but we can exaggerate that and it's going to uh, tick over there. But maybe something a little bit different here too. Maybe maybe a bevel, perhaps. Maybe something that would be uh, stick out quite a bit, jeweled in a way. And that would, uh, it would help that a little bit. So then you have that design in here. But again, if we go back in here and click, go back to our drawing tools, there are a couple of other options that we can choose. We can do uh, check text direction, maybe change the direction of our text. Uh, we could do uh, line text. I don't think it's going to change much here because we have it uh, pretty compact, whether it's top, middle, or bottom. And then we can create a link if we want to go ahead and put that link in there so people can click on it, maybe go to a different uh, portion of, uh, you know, maybe a place in the web you want them to visit. That's uh, okay too. It would just uh, be linked, just as letters would be linked uh, for that. And it could be the whole art too. But uh, position and wrap text, these are all just basic uh, text options. If there are items in here that you want to move forward or move to the back, you could do that too. For instance, if you were to take that shape and maybe send that backwards, we could do that. Or we can bring it forward. Let's go ahead and try that. Well, let's go ahead and choose that shape. And we're going to send that backwards to see what that does. Oh, it should be in the back. But if you go uh, bring it forward and maybe we could take that text, we could do that too. Let's go ahead and send that backwards, bring that forward. But that's not going to work. And you know why it's not working? It's because all this text is incorporated in the shape. 
But if you were to take different text, maybe overlay it on top of that, maybe something like this, now we have the capacity to bring that forward or backwards. So with that shape, now we can send that backwards. Brings that text forward if you want to do that. And of course, with that text, if we highlighted that and go to text effects and go to 3D rotation and choose that same rotation we did before, now we kind of have that text floating out front. So you have text that's embedded into the shape like we have in the background, and you have this new text in here that we could add to it. A couple of different options in there. So again, back to this. Uh, these are uh, some uh, various uh, text options that we have. Remember, everything is kind of stacked on top of each other here in Word. And then we can do alignment, group, rotate, and other things here. And over here in the far right, to complete our tour, we can actually take the, the basic size and shape of our whole shape and actually define it with very specific values. So instead of 2.72, we can make that 3, perhaps make it a little bit taller. And uh, it's width, uh, 3.7, maybe 3.5, maybe a little bit more narrow. We could do that too. And that's uh, what you have there. And again, if you click off to the side of retains and maintains, uh, the original orientation we put in there. Okay, so we're almost done here. In fact, we are done. Let's go ahead and save your Word document, uh, as you might have it right now. And uh, what I try to do here is try to show you a way to uh, create a logo using Word Art in Word. But how do we save this? You want to save your Word document, of course, at this point. But when you're all done, look for that snipping tool. In Windows 8 and Windows 10, you could use the search option for that. And you could do the same, very same thing in Windows 7, too. And uh, what you're looking for is a snipping tool. And once you find that, it's going to look something similar to this. You want to go to New. You want to go to New. What you want to do is you want to sketch out a box around your logo. And then you want to save it. It's going to save it to the same resolution that the screen is at right now. And uh, put it in a file location of your choosing. Something that's convenient. Something you're going to be able to pull it up pretty quick when you get to your drawing in SolidWorks. So make sure you put it there. And then you'll be done. So the premise of this video was to show you a way to create a logo using WordArt in Microsoft Word. It's not the only way, the way I showed you. There are lots of options, tons of options in here. But this uh, kind of gets you started, kind of shows you where some of those options are and how to get started. And there's a lot of ways to make modifications to your logo in WordArt in order to get something that's fairly reasonable and something that you would like to include into your SolidWorks drawing.